Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sassy Sisters with Carrie and Kim. You're listening to Society Bites Radio. How are you doing, Kim? I'm doing fabulous. How about yourself? I'm good. Ready for another great radio show? I am absolutely ready. Can't wait to get going. What are you drinking? Well, vodka, of course. Oh, <laughs> how about right. you? Kim's favorite wine is vodka. <laughs> so I'm drinking Sangiovese this evening. It's delicious. It's from ta- Italy. And I'm enjoying it very much. So tonight we have an amazing guest. She's a sassy sister. Her name is Holly Bentley. Holly uh, works as a graphic and floral designer. She's worked as a graphic artist and floral designer. She earned her design degree with the Interior Designers Institute in Newport Beach, California. Her work on the 2015 Decorator Show House in Buffalo, New York, was published in Design New York magazine and was featured on local TV and radio shows. She began to specialize in decor and design when she created pieces for the WNY Festival of Trees in 2015 and 16, winning Best New Designer and Best Wreath, respectively. She moved to Venice, Florida in 2017 and began to build a following in Sarasota County, including Kim and I. Absolutely. We just love your work, and we're so excited that you're here tonight. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. And WNY is, I should have spelled it out, Western New York. Aha. Yeah. So, Holly, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, water, don't you know? She's a liar. You didn't put that in your bio, Holly. <laughs> you know what I You know what I love to see? A liar whose pants are on fire. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a little pink libation next to you. It's matching your outfit. You're pretty cute yeah, over there. Yeah, there you go. I'm all um, pink tonight. I think we call that a Cosmo, but we're going to see what happens. So, <laughs> so without further ado, Kim, what do you got to say to Holly? Well, Holly, how, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Huh. Well... I'm Holly Bentley. I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York, and uh, moved to upstate New York when my dad got a promotion in 1961. We lived in Rockland County. I lived in New City when it was a new city. My parents built one of the first houses there. Um, And then when my mother found herself pregnant with my little brother, her third child, she's like, I'm out of here, went back to Buffalo so her mom could help her out. So... um, Anyway, yeah, then when my parents got divorced, I moved to New York City with my dad, had a blast, Um, just had a lot of fun, and um, decided, I've been married for almost 43 years, and when my husband was transferred to California, got a great job out there, I had to close down my business in Boca Raton and Delray Beach, I was in the floral industry, And I decided if I'm moving cross-country, I'm finally getting my college degree. Mm. So that's what I did. I got my degree in interior design from the Interior Designers Institute in Newport Beach, as you mentioned. I got that in 2014. And uh, the rest is history. Awesome. That enough? Well, Well, it's a great place to start. Okay. We know you did something very unique when you were younger that not many women can say. And not many women can qualify for. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that, Miss Holly. You're probably referring to my 10 months as a Playboy bunny. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. I auditioned for it uh, when I found out that there was going to be a new Playboy club in Buffalo. Um, several people said I should try out. Uh, so I did. And it was grueling. They kept calling us back and calling us back, and then they would get caught, and I was never caught. Um, I've decided nine is my lucky number because that was my number that I had to wear uh, to every audition, and we had to walk, and I had to wear a bathing suit, and I thought I was fat. I think I weighed 98 pounds. (laughs) And, (laughs) And I didn't have any boobs, and I'm like, I'll never get this job. And then I got the job. I couldn't believe it. Um, I Unless found they out had later, other assets that they liked very and much. And put the emphasis on ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> made a teeny tiny waist and a nice round butt. And yes, I look at the pictures eyes. now. I'm like, where'd that go? But <laughs> it's about yeah, to meet you... my knees. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Oh, you're still beautiful. Thank you. What was it like being a Playboy bunny? What were your what were your duties? What did you have to do? I mean, well, tell us. I was I I was working still as a graphic artist and I didn't want to give that up because that was a life goal was mm-hmm. to be in graphic arts. 
uh, the bank I worked for was not thrilled that I was a bunny, but I've always been a bit of a rebel. So I, they said, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. And the worst thing to ever tell me is I can't do anything. Here, um, here. So, yeah. So I kept working Monday through Friday. And then Friday night and Saturday night, I would go into the Playboy Club and I was a cocktail waitress. I would generally start around seven at night. And I'd wear the, I, we were allowed to wear two inch heels or three inch heels. And I went with two. Um, some of the bun- former bunnies I know now who wore the three inch are having serious foot problems. So I think <laughs> oh, I made yeah. the right decision. A sensible bunny. Yes. Um, anyway, yeah, they, I found out later they hired us for our legs and our personality. Um, I know I still have good legs and here's my personality. So, uh, <laughs> so that's what they cared Score. about. Um, that's I was awesome. blessed with a great smile. I had beautiful long hair, wavy hair and, uh, just had a lot of fun. Um, uh, I was one of the few married bunnies. Um, yeah. Wow. And uh, Bragging the, rights on the husband, right? Uh, yeah, bragging mm-hmm. rights on the husband. And, uh, boy, I made tips, and we put our tips right here in our cleavage. In, and so when we take our costume off back in the bunny hutch at the end of the shift, the which in hutch. Buffalo is like five in the morning because the bars close at four, all this money would come flying out. How fun. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. like fives and tens. It was great. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it was great. So uh, that was the first time I was able to get us out of debt uh, because I I was able to save money. I put those tips in a bank account at the bank where I worked and saved up some bucks. That's awesome. It was. was That's really awesome. Yeah. So um, you have another talent that not a lot of people have. (laughs) And I think it was taught to you when you were a child. Yes, I danced the hula. Aww. My godmother was Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. She watched the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, and it affected her for the rest of her life. And I heard stories about that that have impacted me as well. But Auntie Henny taught me to dance the hula, and I had my own show when I was in my early 20s. My mom was the MC, and there were several young ladies in the show. I was hired by... Uh, United Airlines. I toured with the United Airlines and the Sounds of Young Hawaii, which are also known in the islands as the Kailua Madrigals from Kailua High School in Kailua. So that is awesome. Yeah. So I danced the hula. I can still dance the hula. Yes, you can. You yeah. did it for us one I've night. Seen you dance the it hula. Was so much I think fun. it was after a couple cosmos. I know it was at a Sassy Sisters meeting. <laughs> well, you know, things like that happen at Sassy Sisters yeah. socials. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. How did you uh, find Sassy Sisters? Tell us about what your experience with Sassy Sisters Okay, so Kim and I were talking about this on the way over. I went through a really rough spot in my life. I graduated from design school thinking, oh, I'm going to go out and kill it. I'm going to get hired by this top interior design firm, and I'm just going to be this great designer. Well, I didn't take into account my age, which was over 40? <clears throat> At the time, over 40. <laughs> uh, there's very definitely age discrimination, and it impacted me directly. Um, I did um, bid on that space at the Decorator Show House in Buffalo for 2015. I had lived most of my life in Florida and Southern California, so I bid on an outdoor space, and I found out the only reason I got it was because nobody else bid on it because they're all Western New Yorkers, and they knew that there'd still be snow on the ground in April. <laughs> and there was. My outdoor space was under four feet of snow three weeks prior to the opening. But the snow melted by the grace of God, and my, my concrete furniture was installed. And it was just lovely. Um, at any rate, I, I finished that, and it took another year before I got a job as a stylist in the Fisher Price Fisher Price Photo Studio uh-huh. and Video Studio, which is big in, in western New York, Buffalo, New York. Uh, that's where they're headquartered. And that lasted about three months. And I was pretty down in the dumps about that, but then I thought, you know what? I went to came to Florida, and my husband said, see if you can find a little house. Well, I did. Uh, I live in Venice, and I moved in April of 2017 took a a job with a window treatment company in Venice, and for whatever reason, well, that lasted five weeks, and I love to 
tell people my first clue should have been when the UPS guy said to me, well, you're like the sixth or seventh person they've hired for this position <laughs> in the last six months. Yes, that was Ding. definitely. That was like yes. Bob. <laughs> yep. So there that was go. five weeks. And then after the long summer, I landed another job in Lakewood Ranch. And, of course, it was August. And what do I know? I didn't know. <laughs> the traffic gets worse in November. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that lasted five weeks. I didn't have to deal with it. Then my next job was with a florist in Venice, and that lasted two and a half days. But on the very first day, a woman came in to get a door prize piece for her auction, and I asked for her business card. She says, oh, we're with Sassy Sisters. It was Kim Smith, and I kept her card. Oh, our very own Kim Smith. That's right. Awesome. And I went to the first my first Sassy Sisters meeting a few months later. So she only worked there two and a half days. That's right. But yet I met her during that time. That's, How awesome was that? The universe is talking. <laughs> yeah. That's yes, awesome. it was. Yeah. Great. It was meant to be. Yeah. So, Holly, you've had a couple little tragic things happen in your life. A few. Some things. Um, you got hit by a drunk driver? What happened? I did. Beautiful, bright, sunny day in Orlando. I was on my way to work uh, in Kissimmee, and um, I remember seeing it. I mean, the two cars in front of me got through, and, and I saw him hit the car in front of him, and then the next thing I knew, he was coming straight at me, and I swerved to avoid a head-on, and he drove up the side of my car. Oh. Um, yeah, it, I was in a wheelchair for about six months. I needed to learn to walk again. Uh, oh, it was no. very traumatic. Oh, my goodness. My left lung was punctured. My pelvis was broken in four places. My left hip was broken. Um, I had, I still have uh, nerve damage in my feet and in my head, in my where the glass went into my head. How old were you then? Oh, I had <clears throat> just turned 30. <laughs> <laughs> I was young. So now that I'm just over 40. <laughs> yeah. She's well, over 40. Yes. Yeah. So am I. Yes. Me, Me too. There we are. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hi. So, um, you know, I was looking at some of your story here, and you also had another uh, issue. You had to, you almost died from appendicitis. Tell us about that. I did. Oh, my gosh. So I was living in upstate New York, and um, this was a big reason why we moved back to Buffalo. I was very sick with a stomach ache and nausea and vomiting, and um, my mom didn't know what to do. My pediatrician was in Buffalo, and she said, Holly's this, this, and she gave the symptoms. He said, get her to the ER. And the doctors said she needs an appendectomy, and indeed I didn't, but they did it anyway. Um, And I developed sepsis. Um, I almost died. I was in the hospital for over two weeks with sepsis, and... (sighs) I didn't understand what that meant until very recently. My son is a doctor, and he helped explain it to me. I'm like, why did I almost die from an appendectomy? But now I understand. It can poison your system, I guess. Yeah, it seems like it. Well, we're glad it didn't. Thank you. And you have a daughter, too, don't you? My daughter is an actress, and she lives in California. Mm. Uh, When she was six years old, and my son was uh, nine months old, she said, I want to be in plays. So my husband and I had been in plays and t- TV commercials and print. So I knew all the agents and, and all the casting directors. And so I said, sure. So I got her out there, and she was in plays. And then she got into print in Central Florida and television commercials. And when we moved down to Boca Raton, she auditioned for and was admitted to the prestigious Magnet School, Dreyfus School of the Arts in West Palm Beach. Nice. And she graduated in 2005 and then went to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in Los Angeles for two years and has worked um, pretty steadily up until this year. Nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Until COVID hit. That's yeah, right. That. <laughs> That's right. So tell us, uh, do you, tell us who your role models are. What are the What are the people in your life that have really helped you define who you are today? Role models. Well, I'll start with Twiggy. 
<laughs> I love Twitty. <laughs> yes. Um, I was always really skinny. I was skinny before the appendectomy and, and sepsis, and then I was really, really skinny. And I never really gained that weight back until I was 30. And then it, then that's history. You know, you just kind of just pack on the pounds. So, but... Uh, yeah, I was always really super thin, so I cut my hair like Twiggy, and I bleached it blonde, and I, I didn't have wrinkles under my eyes then, so I could do the little long eye.